Greetings viewers and welcome to today's in-first sharing session where we will be covering the option to, that allows you to go and change your financial accounting year. So the majority of businesses would run a 12 period financial year. However, there may be certain instances where you may need to increase the number of periods in your financial year or in fact reduce the number of periods of your financial year. So today we're going to be showing you how to deal with those two scenarios within Sage 200 Evolution. Right, so what I've got here is I've got a Evolution company. And if I go to my common maintenance company details, um, accounting periods, I'm currently now sitting in year two. And as you can see, my year two runs from January up until December. It's a normal 12 period year. However, due to whatever circumstances, I now need to reduce my financial year. So instead of ending it in December, I now need to reduce my year to 10 periods, which means that my closing date for the end of my year two is going to be 31 October 2019. Right, let's just see exactly how that happens. So we all need to know, understand is that evolution runs on a 12 period financial year. However, it means in our example, we now need to incorporate 12, 10 months into 12 periods. The easiest way to do it will be the following. We know that the, our financial year ends in October, was going to end in October 2019. First thing we need to go do is set this to the end of the financial year. Now, before we make any changes, please ensure that you made a backup of your data and that all users have exit the application while performing this process. Right, so I'm saying that the end of my financial year is going to be 31 October 2019. Okay, so as you can see, there's a bit of a problem here. We've got like three months where we need to change those details. Now, as I mentioned previously, is that we need to now incorporate 10 months into 12 financial periods. So what you could all easily do is you could always go and modify previous months okay, and make those changes there at the date range, or you can take subsequent months and go make the changes there. However, what I'm going to be doing in my case is I'm going to go make changes to the subsequent months. So currently, I'm working period 20, which is August 2019. I'm now going to make a couple of changes in order for me to incorporate those 10 months into 12 financial periods. Right, so here goes. Right, first of all, we're saying that period 20 ends on the 31st of August 2019. And I'm just going to make a couple of changes. Yeah, subtle changes I might add. We set that to there. Right, it's as simple as that. So what I've done now is I've maintained the 30 or the 30 month or the calendar month period from January up until August. As you can see, no problem there. Everything's in order. And what I've had to do to incorporate my changes, I've had to break up September and October into two week periods. So what I'm saying then is that period 21 will run from the 1st of September 2019 to 15 September 2019. Period 22 is going to be from 16 September 2019 to 30 September 2019. Period 23 is going to be from 1 October 2019 to 15 October 2019. And then my final period is going to be 16 October 2019 up until 31 October 2019. So I've got my 10 accounting periods split up into 12 portions. Okay, and as you can see, I've maintained the status quo in periods 13 up until 20. They all going to incorporate the 30 month or the calendar month period. Okay, right. So once that's done, I would need to run a GL relink. Okay, but before we need to do that, is we need to go and update the subsequent financial years. So in order for me to do that, look in the top left hand corner of your screen. An option that says recalculate all period 
we calculate all period closing dates after the selected period. So I'm going to say, right, there we go. I'm going to run this option. So now if I look at my current situation now, you'll see that we've said October the 31st, 2019 is the end of year two. However, if I go to my year three, there's a gap as this starts in January of the subsequent year. So in order for us to fix that, we now need to go run that option. So I'm going to highlight the end of my financial year and run that option. Recalculate all period closing dates for subsequent periods. So there we go. Right, that's been sorted quick and easy. And there we go. One more time. Period 24 ends 31 October 2019, which is the end of my year two. Year three now starts on the or is going to start in November 2019, ending on the 30th of November 2019, and carries on as per normal. Okay, quick and easy, up and running. Right, the next step is going to be we need to go run a GL relink. Now, remember is that every time there's a posting of a transaction within Sage Evolution, that transaction is allocated a period number. So the system knows exactly when running certain reports for a specific date range, exactly which transactions display in the report based on the period number. Due to the fact that we've now gone to go change the actual accounting periods and the cutoff dates, we need to now go on a GL relink in order for this period parameters to be recalculated. Right, so there we go. Close that. It just confirmed everything's in order, no problem. Ending on that date and year three is going to start straight after that. Right, there we go. Once again, it informs me that geo relink must be run or to update those accounting periods on all transactions, which I'm going to be doing. Right, so there we go. Now we're going to go to general ledger, maintenance, GL relink. Once again, absolutely important. That the backup has been made before you make these changes and also that no users are working in the system once this process has been undertaken. OK, so general ledger. Maintenance. General ledger relink. Right, there we go. Just make sure that all these options have been selected. And you're good to go. Start that. Right, to backup, very important. I'm now going to go view the log file. And what will happen is that I'm going to have my details there. The system will then tell you, based on the log file, that certain transactions have been updated to the new periods and you're good to go. So always check that out before completing or carrying on. So remember is that there are obviously some implications of changing your financial year, and those will really be based on reporting. So things like, for example, income statement, balance sheet, trial balance, customer age analysis, supplier aging, et cetera. Okay? Just be aware that those um, reports are going to display different values simply because your accounting periods have now changed, specifically things like, for example, opening balances, et cetera. So just be aware of that. Right, that's a simple part of we're going to go, we've gone to now go reduce the accounting periods. The second scenario could be is that you need now to go extend your financial year. Right, let's just go run that option. I'm going to go into a different company in order for us to run that scenario. Right, let's just wait for the program to open. Right, there we go. 
And now back to common maintenance company details. Counting periods. Okay, year two there. Right, this is just our normal financial year consisting of 12 calendar months starting in December and ending in January. In this particular example, we're now going to extend our financial year. So instead of ending in December, we're now going to extend that to end in February of the subsequent year. So once again, you've made the backup, no use is currently working in the system. And remember the rule is to say, well, in order for it to make us easier, we're now going to set the final day as at the end of a financial year. So there we're saying, that's going to be the end of our financial year. Right, so what we need to now do is we now need to incorporate 14 periods or 14 months into 12 accounting periods. Let's just check how it's going to be done. Remember I told you that you can, you can obviously go and change previous periods or else you then can go and modify or change the date ranges for subsequent periods. So currently now, we're working in period 20, which is August 2019, and I'm now going to make changes to subsequent periods to incorporate my 14th month, my 14 month uh, counting period. So just go make this the following. Okay, I'm going to go and quickly make this. Remember is that this one's going to be slightly different because we're extending it. So I'm going to change a couple of options here. Make that the 15th. I'm just going to make that the 15th of October. There we go. It's going to be November. And we're then going to make that the following year. And there we go. So just, let's just have a look at this. Okay, what we said is that we're going to maintain periods 13 to 20, leave them as calendar months, calendar financial years. Okay, we're now going to work on periods 21, 22, 23, and 24. Okay, so what I've done simply, I've said my period 21 is going to range from 1 September 2019 up until 15th October 2019. It's going to really be a six month period, not your normal calendar month of four weeks or a six week financial period, okay. Period 22 is going to range from 16 October 2019 up until 30 November 2019. Once again, it's going to be a six week financial period. Period 23 on the other hand is going to be from 1 December 2019 up until 15 January 2020, another six week period. And then finally, we said that our financial year ends in February of the subsequent year, we're then going to have another six week period ranging from 16 January 2020 up until 29 February 2020. So as you can see, I've made those changes there. I've now incorporated my 14 months into 12 financial periods. Okay, so it's entirely up to you how you want this, um, how you want to incorporate them. As I say, you could then go if you need, want to go and make changes to previous periods if you want to, or work on the subsequent periods. I mean, based on the length of your financial period, it could be, for example, things like maybe a one week, or perhaps a 10 day financial period, based on how you're going to incorporate this, okay? Obviously, the important thing is it, that, that you, the changes that you made, they would need to sort of take into consideration your reporting purposes, et cetera, and obviously be aware that there are going to be certain changes with regards to your report. Right, so that's the end of year three for us, right? If I go year two, if I now go to year three, as you can see, there's a problem there. Right, let's just go fix that. We know how to do that. There we go. Last period of my current financial year for year two. Run that option to update the dates. There we go. No problem there. And let's just go check that out. 29th of Feb 2020 is the end of year two, year three carries on as per normal, simple as that. And then finally, as we all know, in order for us to update the financial periods of those posted transactions, we now need to go and geo-relink. Right, 
there's a warning message just informing us. And we're now going to go around the general ledger relink to update the period set parameters on all those posted transactions. Right, there's my relink option over there. Check all of those options. Start the relink. Backup has obviously been made at this point and no users are currently working in the system. And we're going to now proceed. Okay, no errors, which is a great sign. We can now go view our log file, expand it, and you'll be able to see all the transactions where those period parameters have been updated. <clears throat> Obviously, it's important that um, once you've made the changes, go on a couple of your um, reports, ensure that they do look correct based on the new financial period changes, and you're good to go. So once again, let's just review. Obviously, important to understand is that evolution does work on a 12 period, on 12 periods within a financial year. So depending if you're reducing the number of periods or increasing them, you're going to need to incorporate that particular date range within a 12 period process or 12 period um, interval. Obviously, remember is that to always go and update or once you made the changes, really go and update the subsequent periods of the financial years. And also very importantly, run the relinks in order for those period options to be updated on your processing. Okay, obviously very important once again, and I reiterate, make a backup ensure no use of work in the system once this process has been completed and um, you're good to go. And obviously be aware that your reports may differ based on the new financial changes that you have made. That's a wrap from me. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope that this webinar has been useful. If you are going to be changing your financial periods for whatever reason, um, this is the option or the way to go. So once again, thank you for watching. It's over and out for me and goodbye.